Hey everyone, this week I'm going to be sharing the answers to my top five most frequently asked questions when it comes to product photography. Let's get started. Question number one, what kind of lighting should I be using? Should I use natural light or should I use artificial light? And the answer to that really is based on your situation. It depends on what you have for products and it also depends on what your situation is like in your life. So does your home have adequate natural lighting? Does your schedule allow you to take photos during a time of day when you have access to adequate natural lighting? If the answer to either of those questions is no, then you probably should look into artificial lighting. There are also certain qualities your products might have that will make it a lot easier if you have artificial lighting, and that is reflective qualities. So if you have a product that has a lot of reflective qualities like metals and glass and things like that, then it can be really difficult to minimize reflections using natural light, but a lot easier to minimize them using artificial light. So that is my answer. Not exactly cut and dry, but hopefully will point you in the right direction. Number two, what editing program or smartphone app should I use? That is another question that I get asked a lot. So in terms of an editing program, I've mentioned this on my channel before, and you could definitely check out my previous videos. But one of the most important aspects of having an editing program that is effective for product photography is having one that will embed a color profile. I'm not going to jump into what that means because I do have a few different videos on my channel that you can check out that will talk more about embedding a color profile and how to check to make sure if your editing program does embed a color profile. But just suffice it to say that you need to use an editing program that actually does that task. In terms of a smartphone app, I really love Lightroom Mobile CC. It is free for the most part if you have a paid Adobe Photography subscription that you get a couple of extra features, but even just the free app, even all of the features that are available for free on the app are really, really impressive. It has a built-in camera. You can actually shoot on manual mode, which means you can take control of your white balance settings and your ISO settings and shutter speed and things like that. So it does allow you to take more control over your photos. And it allows you to shoot in RAW, which is a file format that I highly recommend taking your product photos in because it allows you to edit your product photos so much more effectively. And of course, then you can edit right in the app and it does embed a color profile. So I do highly recommend Lightroom CC for your phone. Number three, speaking of phones, I often get asked, is my smartphone camera okay or do I need to have a real camera? And if I do, what should I get? So the answer to that is, if you have a decent, relatively new smartphone and you're just getting started with product photography, start there. You don't have to invest in expensive cameras or anything like that just to get started learning product photography. You can learn a lot with just your smartphone camera. I often have students join my Snap, Sell, Succeed program with their smartphone cameras, and they learn a lot in the program about how to take photos with that camera. And then once they start to feel the limitations of their smartphone camera, then they're ready to up level to a, to a DSLR camera, which I'll talk about in a sec. So basically you can use your smartphone camera to learn about photography, to start taking better photos. You can learn about lighting and a whole bunch of different things with that camera without having to spend extra money. But once you start to develop more skills in photography, you will start to feel some limitations when it comes to that smartphone camera. And so when you are ready to upgrade, I often get asked, what should I upgrade to? Should I get a DSLR camera? Should I try to get a point and shoot camera like a Canon power shot or a Nikon cool or something like that? And my answer is always go for the DSLR camera. You can get entry level DSLR cameras for around $500 these days. And to get a decent point and shoot camera, you're probably gonna be looking at close to that anyway. And the point and shoot camera is not going to give you a lot more control over what your smartphone camera was already doing. So if you're feeling limited by your smartphone camera and you wanna level up, go to a DSLR camera. You have so many more options. You can shoot on manual, you can use different lenses. There are so many more doors open to you when it comes to using your camera and the features and things like that with a DSLR camera. So absolutely worth it. I recommend going with either a Nikon or a Canon entry level DSLR camera. They're both great brands and that would be a goal that I would set. So I do recommend people 
have an eventual goal of upgrading to a DSLR camera. If you're serious about your handmade business, you plan on taking your own photos for a long time, then I would encourage you to make it a goal to upgrade to a DSLR camera at some point because it does allow you to take much more professional looking photos. There's no reason that you can't start with a smartphone right now. Number four, people ask, what should I use for props? So what you use for props is really dependent on your product and your brand. So I recommend you sit down and you think about your product. You think about your ideal customer who's going to be buying and using your product and think a little bit about what your brand's vibe is all about. And then you can choose props appropriate to that. A couple guidelines I do have, your props should always be high quality because the quality of your props will directly impact the perceived quality of your product. So if you use low quality props, like some cheap fake flowers or something like that, people will immediately subconsciously believe that your product is also low quality, which is not a good thing. So definitely take the time to seek out and source high quality props that are really a great fit for your product and for your brand. And that will make a huge difference. Another goal for your product listing photos. So the photos that you're actually going to upload to your website or to your Etsy shop, there's no need to use any more than just one or two props because you don't want to clutter up the photo. You don't want to overwhelm the photo and, and cause people to be distracted by what's happening. You want them to really be focused on your product and too many props can draw focus away from your product. So keep it simple, no more than one or two props and make sure that those props are high quality and a fit for your brand and your ideal customer. Number five, how do I make my colors look accurate? This is a really big question that I get quite frequently. And there are a few different things that we should talk about in terms of color accuracy. So first of all, it's making sure that when you're taking your photo, you're setting yourself up for accurate colors. That means that your light source is neutral in color. So daylight is neutral color. Make sure that you are using light bulbs in your artificial lighting setups that are neutral in color. Most photography setups do have neutral bulbs. If you are buying bulbs you know, yourself at Home Depot or something like that, then you may encounter issues with the bulbs being different colors. And that is not what you want. So always seek out daylight light bulbs if you are sourcing light from different places that should be somewhere around 5500 kelvin to 6000 kelvin something in that range will give you a nice neutral light make sure that there are no surroundings in your environment that are a really strong color like red walls or green grass or anything like that the light will bounce off of and cast color across your photos. That includes your shirts. Make sure that you are not wearing a shirt that is a bright color. Choose a neutral shirt on the day that you're taking your photos to avoid casting color across your shot. Also make sure that your camera settings are appropriate. There are a lot of different ways you can set white balance on cameras. So check to make sure that you don't have a setting on your camera that may be throwing off the colors. If, if in doubt, just set it to auto. That's usually a safe bet. Okay, so that is how you can set yourself up for success in taking photos with accurate colors. And the next piece comes along with the editing process and tweaking the color balance in your editing process. That is a conversation for another time. I won't be able to delve deeply into that in this video, but you can make minor adjustments to your color balance in your editing process using those tint and temperature sliders. Do it very, very carefully because the more you mess with it, the more you can throw off the balance in your photo as a whole, and it can get pretty off pretty quickly if you're not very, very careful. So there are more advanced techniques and a variety of different techniques to get that really great color balance, but those tips will at least get you pointed in the right direction. Okay, and as a bonus point, what I do wanna share, not necessarily a question that I get asked a lot, but one that I really think is important and I wanna share the answer to anyway is, where should I start? So when you're starting out in product photography and you are not really sure where to start because it's so overwhelming and you'll hear so many things and you'll see people talk about styling photos and editing photos and cameras and setups and you'll just feel really, really overwhelmed. And people will often just want to know where should I start in all of this? And the place that you should start is always lighting. Master lighting first 
all of the other things are important and they do come next, but if you don't have the foundation of great lighting in place, then you will not have a nice photo, no matter how great you style it or how well you can edit it. If you don't have the lighting part mastered, then you will struggle with every other step. So start with developing a great lighting setup, figure out what lighting works for you and how to make it work for your products. And that will be the best place for you to get started. Okay, and that is it for today. If you are looking for a resource to help you with your product photos, I encourage you to download my free product photography quality checklist that is linked in the description of this video. It shows you what the qualities of a great product photo are, and it will give you a handy checklist for you to just check to make sure that all of your product photos are hitting all of those marks so that you can upload them to your website with confidence. And that is it for this week. Thank you for joining me. Do not forget to hit subscribe so you get a notification every time I release a new video and I will see you next week.